Welcome to EliGuitarist.com, this is Tavi Ginario and today I'll be teaching you how to play Danza Brasilera by Jorge Morel. It is a piece that has been so often requested by our students, we're finally getting around to doing it and so let's uh, dive into this piece together. Uh, I divided up the piece into six different sections, there is 120 bars but before you give up from the very beginning thinking that that's a, a big piece, um, it will go by pretty quickly I think. Um, there is a lot of repeated sections and I'll make mention during the tutorial which sections are repeated. So once you learn a section it's likely that you'll be playing that section two or three times throughout the piece. Danza Brasileira is a specific Brazilian um, typical dance. Uh, it is uh, in the tempo of samba. Uh, that's a fast, energetic, full of life rhythm. And this piece is really all about the groove. It's all about maintaining a dance groove and having tempo consistency. And so we're gonna try our best with this piece to, to be really, really tight when it comes to the tempo and all the syncopations. And so in this tutorial, I'll be dealing with technical aspects for the left and right hand, how to play this piece in a way that's ergonomic, that makes sense, that's not stressful for your hands. And we're going to talk a lot about rhythm as well, making sure that you understand the rhythms and all the syncopations in this piece. So let's get started with part number one. Part number one contains bars 1 through 19. So before we actually get to playing the actual piece, uh, I want us to internalize the rhythm of samba. And we're going to slow it down so that it goes into bossa nova territory. So samba would be some... When you slow it down, it sounds kind of like bossa nova. You almost feel like sipping a cup of tea and uh, just enjoying the beach and the sun and the waves. Um, let's do this. Let's grab the chord that we're going to play for the first four bars. The notes are A, open fifth string, F sharp, play with the first finger on the fourth string, fourth fret, C natural, play with the second finger on the third string, fifth fret, and E, play with the third finger on the second string, fifth fret. It's a beautiful jazzy chord. And then we're going to alternate with the low open sixth string. Okay, so first of all, let's do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. It's pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. We're going to play A on beat number one, beat number two, break, beat number three, E. That's going to be the rhythmic figure. That's what locks in the groove. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, notice what I'm doing here. I'm not allowing the note to ring unrestrained. Once you do that, you lose the groove, you lose the rhythmic crispness. What I'm doing instead, I'm playing the A note and then I'm using my pinky, finger number four, to touch the string gently. You don't want to slam it on the string. It's not that, you don't want to get a sound. You just barely touch it so that it mutes the string from ringing. I'm also using a combination of the fourth finger on the left hand and the thumb to add that sense of crispness. It's a double muting, it just makes it crisper and also provides some safety. In case I miss something with the right hand, uh, that, that muting sound is going to be covered by the left hand. So, here we go, first chord, bar number one. We're just gonna do this. For the first beat, I'm going to play the chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, on beat number two, I'm going to add something just to build this rhythm up a little bit. One, two, three, 
four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let's build it up even more. What I'm going to do with beat number three, I'm going to subdivide it into eighth notes. So I'm going to count it. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. You may want to get used to counting like that. It sounds like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and is going to help us get that syncopation. So this is the rhythm. One, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, so bar one again. One, two, three, and four, and. Let's do a few of those, just bar number one. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Okay, that's bar number one. Bar number two goes like this. One and two and three, four. So one and two and three and four and one. So bar number two again. One and two and three and four and. Let's put together bars number one and two. One, two, three and four and one and two and three, four. Okay? Where I'm going to now just play bar number one, bar number two, slowly. I encourage you to play it with me. I'm going to repeat it a few times until you get that groove under your belt. One, two, three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay? When you get comfortable with that groove, start speeding it up a little bit. And I, I added a bass on every single syncopation. It may help you just in, to internalize the rhythm, or you could just use the bass for beats number one and three. Again, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. So bars number one and two are identical in your sheet music as bars number three and four. Um, okay, let's move on to bar number five, and this is where the theme, the mel melody proper, starts. It is the same chord as bars number one through four with a small addition. I'm going to add the high A note with finger number four pressing on the first string fifth fret. And I'm going to strum that chord with the thumb. One, two, and followed by open first string. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next chord is G sharp, B and D. G sharp on the fourth string, sixth fret, B on the third string, fourth fret, D with uh, the first finger on the second string, third fret, and open E. So, P, I, M, A, together, blocked, and again, open E uh, with um, the A finger. So, one, two, and three, and four, and. This next chord uh, on the last half of beat number four of bar five is exactly the same chord that we played, G sharp, B, D, and E, but I'm going to shift this chord two frets over, F sharp, A, D, followed by a C note already pressed with the first finger on the, on the second string first fret. 
So bar five, count it out. One and two and three and four and one and two. Okay, that was bar number six. So bar number six, we have that F sharp A C E chord, residual sounding from the end of bar number five, and uh, that occupies the first beat of bar number six, the first half of a beat. On the second half of beat number one, you have that C note, single C note, play with the M finger on the right hand. So again, bar number five, count it out, moving into bar number six. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and... So for beat number two, the first half is silent, but on the second half of beat number two, we have an open second string B. So bar six, one and two and... For beats number three and four of bar number six, simple eighth notes, nothing fancy about this. It's an A minor arpeggio, A and A play together fifth string and third string uh, on the second fret. C play with the first finger on the second string first fret. Open E and then G. Now, very important here to apply the same consistent right hand approach to this arpeggio. This is one of those arpeggios that will repeat itself throughout the entire piece. So, this arpeggio I'm using P and I together, M, A, and then the G note played with the M finger. And what I'm going to do, moving into bar number seven now, I'm going to keep fingers two and one planted, but now I'm going to take finger number one and collapse it into a partial bar chord to form a D minor seven chord. Here I'm playing D, open fourth string, A, C, and then there's an F note played on the first string, first fret with the first finger. Okay, so bar seven, one and two and open first string. That's the first two beats of the bar. One and two and... Now I'm going to take finger number two and rather than lifting everything in order to form this G7 bar chord, I'm going to slide finger number two from the second fret of the third string to the fourth fret. And I'm going to form a full bar chord. G, F, B and D. So for the right hand, I'm using P, I, M, A, and I'm plucking here the 6th, 4th, 3rd, and 2nd string. G, F, already pressed by the bar chord, by the bar finger, B, played with the 2nd finger on the 3rd string, 4th fret, and D on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, already pressed by the bar finger. So bar number 7, one and two and three and four and on the last half of beat number four I'm going to anticipate this C major seven chord and here I'm playing G, B and E. The G played with the fourth with the third finger on the fourth string fifth fret, B played with the second finger on the third string fourth fret, E played with the fourth finger on the second string fifth fret. So bar seven again, moving into bar number eight. One and two and three and four and one and two. Bar number eight, for the first uh, beat, we have two eighth notes, rhythmically eighth notes. One and, what I'm doing here, I'm adding the C note, play with the first finger on the fifth string, third fret. Okay, let's break it down. One and two and once again. So one and two and three, four. And uh, for beats number three and four, I'm playing an open sixth string and an open first string. Okay, so let's put together bars number seven and eight. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. 
Okay, bar number nine. Back to the chord that we used in bar number five. And it's uh, an identical repeat of bar number five. So one and two and three and four and one and two and now. The arpeggio is similar, but the ending note is different. On bar number six, we had. Now, on bar number 10, we're going to have. Okay, so let's break down that arpeggio on the last beat of bar number 10. A together, fifth string open, A on the third string with the second finger, C note played with the first finger on the second string first fret, open high E, and now I'm going to play an E flat with the fourth finger on the second string fourth fret. And very important to follow the same uh, um, sequence for the right hand. P and I together, M, A, M, and I'm going to take that fourth finger and just slide it back one fret to form the next chord on bar 11. Here we have B played with the first finger on the fifth string, second fret, F on the fourth string, third fret, A on the second string, on the third string, second fret, and D with the fourth finger on the second string, third fret. So bar 11, one and two and. So beats number one and two go like this. One, two and. Moving on to the end of the bar, this is beat number three. One and two and. So, beat number three, one and. And here I'm playing open sixth string, open third, G sharp play with the first finger on the third string, first fret, open second string. One and two and and an A minor chord on the last half of beat number four of bar 11. A, play with the fourth finger on the fifth string, on the sixth string, fifth fret. C, play with the second finger on the fifth string, third fret. And then a partial bar chord pressing strings number four and three with the first finger on the second fret. Okay? So now let's put it all together. Let's see how it sounds. Bars number nine through 11, and I'm going to count out the rhythm and subdivide it. One and two and three and four and one and two and one and four and one and two and three and four and. All right. Uh, I get exhausted just hearing myself count. Uh, I hope this is helpful to you as you seek to really get that syncopation and that rhythm really tight. Let's take now bar number 12. The bar number 12, the first half of beat one is a residual chord from the previous bar. So four and one and. So on the second half of beat number one, we have this chord B, F, a and D. Okay, B play with the first finger on the fifth string, second fret, F on the fourth string, third fret, A with the second finger on the third string, second fret, and D uh, played with the fourth finger on the second string, third fret. Then the next chord on beats number three and uh, beat number three is Sounds dissonant, but in the context, it's a great sounding chord. B flat, played with the first finger on the fifth string, first fret. G sharp, played with the second finger on the third string, first fret. Open second and first string. And then open sixth string E. All right, let's take bar number 12. One and two and three, four. All right, in context now, bars one, bars 11 and 12 connected. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. Bar number 12 again. One and two and three, 
four. All right. Bar number 13 now is identical to bar number five and bar number nine. Um, and I'm not going to go through bars number 13 through bars number 19 because they are identical to bar number 5 through 11. The only exception is bar number 16. Bar number 16, on bar number 8, we had this C major 7 chord. 4 and 2 and 3 and 4. That's bar, 11, bar 8. But now on bar 16, we have 4 and 2, 4 and four and one and two and rather than having these chords played blocked on bar eight one and two and three four bar 16 goes one and two and three and the end of bar 16 rather than having just an open first string op we have open sixth string and then i'm going to play a b d and e together B played with the second finger on the third string, fourth fret. D played with the first finger on the second string, third fret, and open high E. So bar 16, one and two and three and four. Bar 17 now, one and two and three and four and one and two and, and bar 19. Okay, so bar 17 and 19 are identical to bars number um, 9 through 11. So bars number 9 through 11. Okay, all right, so now that we have gone through every bar in this first part of the tutorial, note for note, I'm going to play it from bar number 1 slowly. And while I play it, I'm going to try to count it out. It's actually pretty challenging to count it out vocally and count out the subdivisions, but let's give it a try. And hopefully this is helpful to you to lock in that rhythm because there's nothing really more disappointing than uh, rhythmically sloppy playing when it comes to this piece. Um, I think as classical guitarists, sometimes we take too much liberty with the rhythm and there are pieces where that's warranted. But when you have a rhythmic dance like this, like Danza Brasileira, uh, I think it's really good to be tight on the rhythm. So here we go. Bar number one, I'm going to play it all the way up through the end of bar number 19. And let's count it out. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... All right, I'm going to play this one in the fast track version of this tutorial later on, where you'll be able to play with me at about half the tempo speed of this piece. <laughs> 